Hi and good day everyone. Today we'll be talking a bit about grade 12 math, MCV4U, calculus and vectors. And we're going to start with probably information you know already. And we're just going to blow it up crazily into a proof. Because proofs are fun. We all love proofs. So before we get into the nitty gritty of the question matter, we need to just recap a bit of information. So first of all, what is a vector? So a vector is any quantity that has both magnitude and direction. So for example, velocity, displacement, acceleration, a force. All these things have both magnitude and direction and thus makes them a vector. With a vector, there are two representations of it, geometric and algebraic. So a geometric representation of a vector is those stuff you've been drawing on graphs for years now. So the vector will have a head, it will have a tail, and the vector is normally drawn with an arrow going from tail to head. So the arrow represents the direction, and then the length of the vector itself represents the magnitude. The algebraic representation of a vector is another familiar concept where you can write them in a multiple number of ways. So a vector x can be written like a column, a, b, c, or like a row, a, b, c, or again, like a, comma, b, comma, c. All these are correct, and this is what you call a vector with three components. A vector can have any amount of components, can be one, two, three, four, up to whatever numbers you can count up to, and that can count as vectors. However, for this slide and for this course actually, all you'll be considering pretty much it's vectors with two components and vectors with three components. To recap now, we talk about the position of one vector with respect to another. So if I have some vector a that has three components, a1, a2, a3, and a vector b that also has three components, b1, b2, b3, then the distance, the vector, sorry, from a to b is equal to the vector b minus a, which is equal to b1, b2, b3 minus a1, a2, a3. And this subtraction occurs component-wise. So b1 minus is a1, b2 minus is a2, b3 minus is a3. So you can only add and subtract vectors that have the same number of components. Similarly, if I want to know the vector BA, then I'll just be the vector A multiplied by the vector B. Minus, sorry. That'll be the vector A minus the vector B. To recap, again, we need to understand what's the magnitude of a vector. The magnitude of a vector is also known as the length of a vector. So again, if A has three components, then the magnitude of A is equal to the first component squared plus the second component squared plus the third component squared, and you find the square root of that entire sum. So it'll just be magnitude of A denoted by two vertical lines, on either side of the, the vector is equal to a1 squared plus a2 squared plus a3 squared all to be square rooted. Finally, we can get into some definitions. So let's define a dot product. Dot product, first and foremost, can only occur between vectors with the same number of components. So we have x and y defined as a1, a2, a3, and b1, b2, b3 respectively. And the dot product is equal to a1 multiplied by b1 plus a2 multiplied by b2 plus a3 multiplied by b3. And is written as such x dot y is equal to the component wise multiplication. And then you add each of those up together. Also, the dot product can be written in a similar way where x dot y, again the same left hand side, is equal to the magnitude of x multiplied by the magnitude of y multiplied 
by the angle they share with each other. So if their tails of X and Y meet and then they go out in their respective directions, they form an angle between them. And that angle is theta. So we notice is that the dot product can be expressed algebraically as in a1, b1 plus a2, b2 plus a3, b3, and also geometrically, where we have an angle at which these two vectors x and y meet. So the question at hand now is that triangle ABC has vertices a, negative 1, 3, 2, b, negative 1, 5, 2, and c, 1, 5, and negative 2. And you are asked to show that triangle ABC is a right angle triangle. So with any proof, the first thing you do is that you write down all possible information from the question. So we have the vertices of our triangle, okay, as well as we have to show that ABC is right angled. So right angle means 90 degrees. So somehow in our proof, we have to get 90 degrees coming out as our solution. So the natural way to start with this proof is that let's find the sides of our triangle. So the size of our triangle would be AB, BC, and AC. So AB is just going to be equal to B minus A. This was in the recap. And again, that's our two vectors. And we subtract them component-wise. So negative 1, negative, negative 1 is negative 1 plus 1 which is 0. That's our first component. Then the second one is 5 minus 3, which is 2. And then the last component is 2 minus 2, which is 0. So AB is 0 to 0. Similarly, AC is equal to C minus A, which is equal to 1, 5 minus 2 minus, and then the next vector is minus 1, 3, 2. And that is equal to 2, 2, negative 4. And then finally, BC is equal to C minus B. And you can go through the arithmetic and you get that that vector is 2, 0, and negative 4. And okay, because we're dealing with sides of a triangle, let's find what's the magnitude of the, of the size of the triangle. Well, why not? It's not that much extra work. So again, the magnitude of AB would now be 0 squared plus 2 squared plus 0 squared, which is just square root of 4, which is just 2. AC is just 2 squared plus 2 squared plus negative 4 squared, which is just equal to root 24. And BC, again, the arithmetic is there. So you get 4 plus 16, which becomes root 20. Now we have to use our brains, our noodles. So all we have to work with are the vectors of the size of the triangle, the magnitude of the size of the triangle, as well as a random 90 degree that we have to show as our solution. So is there any formula that we can think of that relates sides to angles? It's probably the sine law. Yeah, but it doesn't help. We don't know what the other two angles in our triangle is. I mean, we can use sine, cos, tan, and figure it out, but that's too much work. There's an easier way to do that. So then let's think now of the cosine law. But the cosine law of any triangle is that c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine capital C. The capital C is the angle opposite C. But what is important in this formula is that our left-hand side has the side C, which means that in our formula, the cosine of that angle has to be the angle opposite common C. It has to be. So then, so then if this formula was the written of A, then A squared, small a squared, is equal to small b squared plus small c squared, minus 2bc cosine capital A, because capital A is opposite common A. So if we're thinking of a 90 degree solution, 
then that's a right angle triangle, which means that I'm dealing with a hypotenuse. Because so all right all right angle triangles have a hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is actually opposite to that 90 degree angle. So I know which side has to be my left hand side of the cosine law. I know what my other two sides of my triangle are. So I just need to show that cosine theta is indeed 90 degrees. Okay, so we have three vectors for the three sides of the triangle, and I have three magnitudes. Which one is the hypotenuse? Well, obviously, the hypotenuse is the longest side of the triangle. That's by definition. C squared is equal to A squared plus B squared, Pythagoras' theorem. So we recall that root 24 was the biggest magnitude of our vector when we worked out all three vector magnitudes. So let's plug this in now to our cosine law. So AC has the highest magnitude. So we put that as our left hand side. And we simply plug in AB squared, magnitude AB squared plus magnitude BC squared minus two magnitude AB multiplied by magnitude BC multiplied by cosine theta. And when we work through this calculation, we see that we eventually come down where cosine theta is equal to zero. And if you just punch that into your calculator or you watch the cosine curve, that only occurs when cosine is 90 degrees or 270 degrees. But we're interested in a 90 degree solution. So yay, well done. You finally gotten this you finally reached the solution after all that thought processes and thinking and whatnot. There's actually a second approach that uses the dot product instead of the cosine law. So the dot product we understand geometrically is where two vectors meet. So what we're interested in here is the two vectors or the two sides of the triangle that meet at a right angle or at the proposed right angle. We don't know it's a right angle yet. That's the suspense of the proof. So obviously the two sides that will meet at the right angle are the two shorter sides. It won't, it won't be the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is always opposite. So let's find the dot product with the vectors that have the two smaller magnitudes than the hypotenuse. So that will be AB and BC, what we found it before. So when we work out the dot product, the left-hand side, we see that that works out to become zero. So again, we get that zero is equal to cosine theta. And if we plug that in your calculator, watch the graph again, that only occurs when theta is equal to 90 degrees. And if a triangle has a 90 degree, then it has to be a right angle to triangle. So in conclusion, when you're dealing with a proof, first thing you do is extract all possible information from the question. In general, proofs need only one or two clever formula to solve. The second part is to write down all working, all ideas as they come to you, and write it down simply, as though you're teaching someone it for the first time. The third thing is that there's always that one point of the proof where you really need to apply the logic or go over the edge or push yourself over the edge. So really think about that, really dig into the proof. And honestly, once you figure that out, you're done. And then finally, if you're thinking about one way and you're working it out and it doesn't give you a solution, then think about it another way. It will come to you eventually and with practice. So I hope that helps with solving proofs in general, and thanks for watching.